today I wanted to talk a little bit more about how I got started and what was my journey like on building my six-figure clothing brand. Before I get started talking about the brand, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my background just so you have a clear picture of how I started everything. I was born in Poland in a small city called Częstochowa. Both of my parents are fully Polish. I lived in Poland until I was about 11 years old. Then my parents decided to move to England so that myself and my brother could have a better future, learn English and have more opportunities in life. Now, when I lived in Poland, I went to a small Catholic school where I had a lot of friends. Everybody kind of knew my parents, everybody knew each other. And then when my parents moved us to England, I didn't know a word of English. So school was really tough for me, especially going into classes and trying to learn. I was always a very ambitious kid. Moving to England with no word of English and not doing as well at school really, really made it tough for me mentally. And it also made it really hard to make friends because I couldn't speak to them. So the first two to three years, I would say I struggled a lot to learn English. Now I know a lot of kids that move to English speaking countries when they're like six or five or whatever, they pick it up really quickly. And that wasn't my case. I really struggled for a long time and in those first couple of years living in England, I felt super, super lonely. My parents were just starting out, so they were working really long hours. I barely ever saw them. My brother actually stayed in Poland with my grandmother for the first uh, two years to finish high school because he he's actually um, even older than me. So for him, it would have been even harder to transition into English school. So I didn't have my brother with me. My parents were working really long hours to make ends meet and I was kind of on my own and it was probably the hardest and the toughest part of my childhood. However, where I found comfort is art. I had an incredible art teacher who kind of took pity on me and who always made me feel really good about all my drawings and paintings and I started to do really well at school with art and that's when my love for art really flourished because that was my way to communicate, that was my way to express myself without necessarily knowing the language. Then around when I turned 13, 14, that's when Facebook started being a huge thing. I transitioned my passion to photography. I started taking photos of other people and helping other friends. And even though my English was super broken, people started to want to hang out with me. And that's how I started making friends and finally uh, managed to learn English. By the age of 14, 15, I was pretty much fluent. Life got a little bit better. I started working as a waitress part-time when I turned about 16, um, 17, just to make some extra money because growing up, my parents couldn't afford to take us on, you know, crazy traveling trips. So we never really went on vacation. And I've always wanted to travel the world. When I was 15, 16, that's when Tumblr came out. Everyone had their own profiles at school and everyone was reposting travel, adventure things. And that's when I realized that that's something that I will want to do one day. That's when I started to manifest that traveling will be a big part of my life. I didn't have a lot of money. I started saving up from my part-time job as a waitress. And then as soon as I turned about 17, um, I asked my brother Amadeus if he would want to travel with me and he said yes and we would take as many many little vacations in between school and work as possible and that's uh, basically when I also started my Instagram when I was I want to say 17 18 I started taking it a little bit more seriously and posting a lot of recipes on health and just a lot of traveling tips on where to go and started growing a little following in there and then soon enough brands started reaching out to me and sending me free clothes and later on started actually paying me and it was only like $200 but to me back then that was a lot of money that would mean I could travel more. It turned into this thing where I just uh, traveled as much as possible and posted on Instagram about it and grew my following that way and then it came time to choose my degree and now I decided to go with biomedical sciences because even though I was getting paid through Instagram a little bit, 
At back then, no one was really calling it career. I just thought it was something fun to do. And back then, I felt like I needed a stable career. And I've always loved biology and chemistry as well as art. When I was 17 or 18, I also applied for an internship at a lab. Try out working uh, somewhere where I would en potentially end up in the future. I applied for an internship, got accepted, and did a summer internship at a lab doing quality control tests and all sorts of different things like that. And that's where I met my manager, Monica, who was one of the best people I've met to this day. She gave me so many opportunities and also offered me a part-time job at the lab whilst I was studying at university. When I started going to university, my Instagram really slowed down a little bit. I couldn't post about traveling as much, but I still very much enjoyed it and did it a little bit here and there, but took all the money that I had for my part-time job and saved it to travel as much as I could during summer when I didn't have school. After I graduated, I had to make a decision whether I want to go into a PhD program, which would be another five years of studying, and then I would be able to become a scientist. At this point, I was also starting to realize that science wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do in the future or working in the lab, because I had so many opportunities working at the lab part-time when I was younger. It made me realize that it wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Around the time when I was finishing my degree in biomedical sciences, I also met my now husband Ryland and he had a full-time job at the time. He was living in America, I was still living in England obviously, and we were long distancing for a while, but after I graduated, I decided to, to take a year out instead of going straight into my PhD. I will try to do Instagram seriously, and then if it doesn't work out and I can't make my money being creative, then I'll go back to school and do my PhD then. During summer, Ryland, back then my boyfriend, asked me to stay with him for, in America, in North Carolina, that we could help each other grow our businesses. He was starting his accounting firm and I was starting social media. At the start, what I did was I worked as an influencer with a lot of different brands. I tried to get contracts which were for at least three months so I knew I had some money coming in every month. I also picked up gyms, cafes as clients and managed their Instagrams and their Facebooks and the Facebook ads for them. That's what I was doing to make a living and it started working. It actually brought enough money to be able to make a living and so I really really enjoyed that part but I also knew that I wanted to start something of my own. When I was living with Island in North Carolina, we decided to give ourselves a deadline of three months to grow our businesses as much as we could. So that's when I also started looking for manufacturers for Jubilee and quickly realized that even though I wanted to start doing uh, hoodies and loungewear, sweatpants, it wasn't something that I could do with the budget that I had. So I basically had no savings. I mean, I might have had like at most a thousand dollars in my bank account. And to be able to customize and design your own hoodies, most manufacturers want you to order at least 500 to a thousand and it can be very nerve-wracking and especially if you don't have that much money it might discourage you from starting your business altogether instead of giving up completely i decided to take the approach of doing wholesaling and start with activewear there was so many different manufacturers with so many different designs wholesale is basically where manufacturers already have their own designs you just pick out colors you can customize it slightly and then slap your logo on it and ta-da! So that's what I did. I basically just sampled a lot of workout sets from a lot of different manufacturers, which also can be quite costly. She costs about 30 to $50 per sample to order it and test it out. And if you don't like it, you have to keep doing that. So I did that for a couple of months before I found the manufacturer. And then I shipped those sets. I think I ordered like 50 and that was so much back then. I was so nervous, but I shipped them to England to my parents' house because Ryland's lease in North Carolina was ending and we both really wanted to travel because for the first time ever we both had the freedom to work from our laptops from anywhere so we wanted to take the opportunity to travel and work at the same time and we did that for two months 
I was developing Jubilee's website and learning on how to launch a whole e-commerce business and at the same time I was still doing social media and influencing other brands and at the end of our travels we went back to England we traveled with in Europe we went to Italy France and then as soon as we came to England I launched Jubilee and I had a big failure of a launch. I think I sold about two sets. I paid influencers to promote it and I thought that I had it all figured out. I thought I had a system. I posted about it myself and it just wasn't selling. And it discouraged me so much uh, from doing the whole thing that I actually kind of gave up for a couple of months because I just felt like the biggest failure. I spent all this money on samples, I spent all this money on ordering 50 sets, paying all these influencers from like the last bit of my savings. I think I did some Facebook ads but they didn't work really well either because I didn't have an audience built so Facebook uh, found it really hard to target ads to the right people so they were really costly and I didn't have a budget to test a lot of ads on. So it was overall just a very traumatic experience because I felt like I dedicated so much of my time and so much of my money and it just wasn't working. Ellen and I, we both were kind of ready to not travel for a while and find a home base where we can both focus on growing both of our businesses. And don't get me wrong, I loved doing social media for other brands, but I just knew that that wasn't my true passion and I knew I wanted something of my own. So that's why I decided to try it again. We actually ended up moving back to America. This time we moved to Dallas, Texas. We decided to go with Texas because it was new for both of us. We could just create our home together from start. We loved how warm it is in Dallas, how sunny it is, how welcoming it was. And we knew that this city had a lot of potential and it was a growing, booming city. So we decided to move. And that's when I decided to really do Jubilee again, but this time pour all of my heart into it and really give it a go. So I decided to save as much money as possible. I continued to grow with my social media influencing and I just saved, saved, saved. And I started testing, looking and researching for new manufacturers until I found a couple of manufacturers that were kind enough to let me start with smaller quantities of like 100 to 200 but were willing to try out my designs and customize the hoodies and sweatpants for me. It took me a really long time to find the manufacturer that had incredible fabrics that kind of went with what I was going for, the high quality for a good price. As soon as I launched the pastel collection for the very first time, it sold out within a week. And I was so shocked because I was so used to failing all the time that I almost couldn't believe that it was happening. I didn't even do a lot of advertising for it. I basically posted it on my own social media. I posted all my stories as a little sneak peek and people started messaging me about it saying, hey, when is this launching? I wanna buy it like now. So I started doing uh, pre-orders on a lot of them and that's basically how it started. And even then I tried to order really small quantities because I didn't want to risk it too much. I didn't have a lot of money to invest back. And for the longest of time, I want to say for a year from that point, I did micro launches. I would order everything. Everything would come to our tiny little apartment. And that's about it. That's how Jubilee started. And then eventually I started posting a lot of videos on TikTok and showing people how I created my designs and why I created them. You guys connected with that and some of my videos went viral and my collections just sold out in minutes. And that's when I decided to get my first warehouse. This warehouse that I'm in right now is my second warehouse. But every time I restocked the website, it would sell out. So I knew I needed a bigger space because when we were storing all Jubilee in our apartment, we just didn't have enough space to store everything. It's just crazy. And I loved that period of my life because I just felt like everything started clicking for me. But at the same time, I was the one that fulfilled every single order. I was the one designing collections. I was the one creating all the TikTok videos, Facebook ads, everything, all the photos, photo shoots for every single product. And so 
I literally worked from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep for a year straight and then eventually as soon as I got my first warehouse I also decided to hire someone part-time which took a big load off of me and I was able to focus on growing the business and then eventually once I started growing it more and more I was able to get this warehouse which is much bigger and now we can store many more quantities than ever before and I've also been able to hire someone full-time Jessica who's an incredible friend and an incredible team member of Jubilee and so that's my story so far and if I have one thing to tell you is don't give up I know you may feel like you've tried every single thing and it may still not be working but the truth is there's always something else that you have to try out and one day it will click, I promise you. Start slow and build your way up and it will work. That's about it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Leave them down below. I do read every single comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe and I'll be back with more next week.